African-American parents living in the United States. It highlights the um, panorama that many individuals face upon arriving in a new world different from their own, which can bring up hurdles and challenges, but shines a light on the many ways that pave the way to success. Rafael Vasquez firmly believes that knowledge belongs to everyone and that it is best to offer resources and let individuals decide for themselves what to do with the information. He's an example of a resilient leader who is vastly respected and adored by the community. His work and guidance have left many positive impacts among various community members. When dealing with difficult situations, his simple suggestions to others is that patience and understanding are vital. After all, one has to understand the population that they're working with to connect with them successfully. Thank you, Rafael, for being with us today. So our next panelist is Valerie Pacheco, um, an AMFT with Humanidad Therapy and Education Services. So Valerie is a, an associate professional clinical counselor born and raised in Los Angeles, California. She received her BA in psychology and Spanish and an MA in counseling with an emphasis in community mental health from Loyola Marymount University. As an associate, um, she continues to embody her alma mater's mission of the education of the whole person, service and faith, um, and the promotion of justice by assisting the Latinx community. Valerie has worked with children, adolescents, adults, couples, and families in a variety of settings, including schools, community-based organizations, and in private practice. Since coming to Sonoma County, Valerie continues to work with various settings by providing support to bilingual and monolingual families and individuals through Sonoma County Behavioral Health, Child Protective Services, and the Redwood Children's Clinic. She's pursuing more training and trauma-focused work. So thank you so much, Valerie, for being with us today and being on our panel. Very excited to have you. So our next panelist is Margarita Garcia. She's a community leader farmer from Oaxaca, Mexico. Her mother tongue is Mixteco, but she also speaks Spanish, some English, and American Sign Languages. Margarita was born into a nucleus of farmers and has always been a farmer. She works picking grapes in different areas of Sonoma County. She works cleaning houses in the county, and she is currently taking child development classes at Santa Rosa Junior College because in the future, she would love to be a special education teacher. Margarita's greatest pride is being able to share her time with farmers and indigenous people because they share life experiences, the importance of caring for the countryside and their fight for equity and basic rights. At the end of the day, they all agree that working on the land is done out of love for the honor of receiving the crops each year. They see this as a grain of sand towards sustainable justice. Um, so thank you so much, Margarita, for being with us today on this panel. We're very excited to hear from all of you. And I'll pass it back over to Ana Maria. Ana Maria, I believe you're muted. I am mute, sorry, I was lost in translation because I didn't have a voice. Did it on purpose because I wanna start our panel that sometimes we have a lot to say and everybody is expecting me to talk, but I don't have a voice because I am lost in translation. Uh, as an immigrant, as a person who English is my second language, but as a client, as a woman, as a community member, sometimes we have a lot to say, but we don't have a way to send our voice out. So the first question to our dear uh, panelists is, do you think we are lost in translation when we talk about mental health? And if yes, why? And I'm gonna encourage you to take turns so we don't get lost in translation, face yourself, so the interpretation can be successful. Thank you so much for being here and welcome to La Salud Mental, Lost in Translation panel.
Margarita, go ahead. And you can take turns, yes. Let's make it very flowing. Thank you for raising your hand. Mi respuesta es sí. Gracias. Margarita, estamos lost in translation. I'm sorry. My we're answer lost. is yes. We didn't understand anything you said. Our apologies. Can you please let us know what happened there? Esto, está, esto es estar perdido en la traducción. Esto es lo que nos pasa. This is what it means to be lost in translation. That is what happens when we go out into the community to ask for any type of service for our indigenous community. When we express ourselves or our needs or who we are, there is no translation for us. Thank you. I can go next if, if that's okay. Um, that's a good question. You know, what does it mean to be lost in translation? And I, I really felt that, Margarita. Um, when we talk about mental health, even the words mental health, mental, meaning the mind, but really we know that health is biopsychosocial, right? And so, for me, mental health means how can I be in right relationship with my interior self? How can I be in right relationship to others? And how can I be in right relationship to the land that I'm occupying? And if, if I can be in right relationship to my interior self, to others and to the land that I occupy, then for me, that means holistic care. Um, and so whenever I feel like I am not doing well in one of those areas, I feel like I am getting lost in translation, translation with, with, with how I walk in different spaces. And I really appreciated Ana Maria starting with, with her mute button um, I really appreciated Margarita and, you know, how it is for, for us to, to walk through spaces, not necessarily feeling seen, feeling heard, feeling valued. Um, and so I think that, that we are asking ourselves a lot of really great questions. So thank you for, for starting us off and, and tapping, to, tapping us into our critical consciousness. Thank you. Valerie? Oh, yeah, so I was jumping, but I saw Rafael's <laughs> box and light up. But yeah, go, going along with um, what Daniela said, it's like, um, for me, it was just like, I was a lost for words just to kind of explain that because it's a, it's sometimes a very abstract thing. It's more of a feeling. It's like, what exactly are the nuances at play that I feel like incapable of communicating what I'm feeling at this moment? Um, describing in a way to feel understood or that somebody could like um, come to, and I don't know why the word defense came up, it's like to be able to advocate for me. So that's one thing that, that came up just because uh, in seeing clients, I, that's a lot of the times that what comes up in the room, it's like, oh, somebody just told me that I should come here. But it's very unclear to them why, but they were able to communicate that to a friend or family member, whoever was trusted at the time. Mm -hmm. And they did the, the decision. It's like, okay, I'm gonna reach out, get help. But now they're confronting that same question. It's like, 
people are advocating for me people are uh, what is it suggesting that I come in but now that you asked me that question I don't know what's the the purpose what's the reason like like a lot of those clinicians things like what's the the presenting problem and that's like a big question in that moment that just to connect with themselves in that way and be able to find the words of like what exactly is going on so I have a focus when I'm coming to therapy and especially it being a, a new experience. Seems like I am in the wrong channel. It's okay, Rafael. If okay. you are speaking English, you can go to the English channel. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do now. So I apologize for that. I apologize, I'm not exactly sure what the issue is. Rafael? And so it's important then to demonstrate the respect. And something else that I wanted to clarify about how there's discrimination against indigenous peoples. Another problem that we have is that we misunderstand our indigenous communities specifically, our ancestors, and I teach this in, in my Latin America and Caribbean studies classes, our ancestors have gone to therapists for thousands of years, but we call them uh, senores or senoras. Or, and we have a, one such person that is coming to visit us in a week. And one of the things that we know is that she lost her voice some years ago and they went to doctors, uh, specialists, to different places. And as a result of this, in many places in Puerto Rico, Europa, Europe, one of the people cleaning their house said, you should talk to X person. And Linda went to talk to them and then sh the next day, when we talk about therapy, sometimes it scares people or maybe they're not scared, but they don't know about it. We have to educate them on how our ancestors have gone to receive these types of messages and emotional support from the dawn of humanity it's not that people are scared it's that we don't know how to communicate this ancestral 
wisdom to our communities. And that is our responsibility as service providers to educate ourselves, having talks such as this, so that we can do this. Thank you. We're going to do a housekeeping stop here. Vamos this wasn't intentional, but we lost in translation because we had to choose like, but we, we speak English and Spanish. Most of the time when we talk about feelings or poetry, we're going to we, talk in, in English, yeah? Vamos a hablar en, uh, en, in English. Spanish, or en if it's my Spanish. When we talk about feelings, we talk in Spanish because it's a romance when I have to be practical, I choose English. And when I'm on, on this panel, I choose English because I, I, I need to math. I have a choice. So this is also not intentional, but that's what happened. Some people couldn't hear because we were in the wrong place, yeah? So we're gonna open the interpretation and the interpreters are gonna be the ones switching. So now you can be Pocho, you can think English, Spanish, you don't need to be in any channel. That's why you won't see the interpretation feature anymore. And the interpreters are gonna be interpreted. Is that okay with everybody? Okay, not intentional, but yes. Okay, thank you so much for your opinions and your backgrounds, your expertise, your uh, sharing with us. How, how it feels from your perspective. To keep going with the panel, I'm going to, to read this and then I'm gonna ask a question. So language is vital, is a vital part of the human connection. That one make us human somehow, some way. The main function of a language in mental health is to give the people the ability to communicate their thoughts, ideas, and feelings with the therapists, facilitators, friends, and families, and also sometimes community members as accurately as possible. Although all species have their ways of communicating, human beings are the only ones that have mastered the cognitive language communication. That make us special and also complicated. Language has the power to build communities. That's why we're here today. But also tears them down. It's, it's a cuchillo de doble fil. It maybe seems obvious, but today we, I'm gonna ask, why to the panelists, why is language important in mental health? Thank you for taking turns. Uh, Ana Maria, I just want to point out, um, they're saying that you need to turn on the, the interpretation tool again, and, the, and I don't know if they're requesting us to not um, talk until that's cleared up. But did you, could you hear me? Okay, why? Okay. I'm glad you could hear me, because it's hard for me to speak in, in English. <laughs> comunicarle no solamente a that 
I can understand what they're saying. So I feel that language is a tool for us to unite a little bit more and see how we can take steps in the direction, in the right direction. No me puede. I'm being told that you can't uh, hear me, so I'm going to pause for a second. Okay, interpreters, can you please direct the traffic here in the loss of translation? I guess I I said this too, too professionally, lost in translation. So can you please come to, and let's make another stop. Can you explain to us what do we need to do in order to listen in English or Spanish at this point? We're lost in translation. Luis? ¿Nos puedes explicar qué está pasando? ¿Qué es lo que tenemos que hacer para escuchar en español o en inglés? Porque si estamos en español, si Daniela está hablando en español, yo me voy al canal de español, pero no oigo un, un intérprete en el canal de inglés. Si Rafael está hablando en inglés en el canal de inglés, no oigo nada en español. So, ¿qué, ¿Cómo podemos hacer para poder oír la interpretación? Es la pregunta del millón. So we're asking the interpreters, how do we do in order, if I'm in the English channel and Daniela is speaking Spanish, very important points that we want to ask you to repeat it later. And I cannot hear in the English side. Uh, I have to go to Spanish side. And if Rafael is saying something very important in, in English, the Spanish people wouldn't listen to them. Ana Maria, it's also an issue with, I didn't pick one and, and I still can't hear. I didn't pick English or Spanish and, and everything is muted. Okay, acaban de decir que los panelistas solamente, los panelistas se van a casar con un idioma. So, se casan con el inglés o el español y ellos van a estar en el diferentes lados interpretando para el resto de la audiencia. Entonces, si cambian de opinión, because that's valid, if you change your mind, just change channel as panelist. So if you want, feel like you want to talk about your feelings, go to the Spanish channel and then interpret it in English. But you're the ones who are going to have the power to choose, like in real life, yeah, the therapist. Which language do you want to talk to your public, to your audience, okay? Oh, no? They say that the panelists have to stay on the main channel, so make sure interpretation is off. ¿Qué hacemos? Okay. Okay. Can, can you come, can you come and? Okay, I'm sorry for this. I guess never gonna use this title. Dani, creo que no estás en el canal de inglés. Hey, Dani, I, don't, I think you're not in the main ¿Me channel. ¿Me pueden escuchar? Ahora sí. Ok. Este, ese es el main channel, ¿verdad? Inglés. Entonces, ¿ya todos me pueden escuchar? Ok, excelente. No, eh, lo que estaba tratando de channel. decir es que eh, para mí como terapeuta, este, la terapia es, es, es una caminata. Es simplemente estar en un camino con, con, con una persona que ha sido formada eh, para poder tener ciertas herramientas y poder tener técnicas que nos ayuden a escuchar un poquito mejor, a relacionarnos mejor. Entonces, el lenguaje no solamente tiene que ser verbal, porque no todos podemos comunicarnos de manera verbal, pero puede ser de manera corporal o puede ser con sonidos. Entonces, si alguien me está comentando algo, una historia que, que realmente me conmueve, eh, que me inspira, yo puedo, a través del lenguaje, comunicarle a esa persona que estoy ahí con ellos en esa caminata. Puedo, a lo mejor, decir, mmm, 
o eso, o échale, o ándale, o esas, esas palabras que, que nos ayudan a, a, a salir, a, a continuar para adelante. Entonces, simplemente para mí, una herramienta que nos ayuda a continuar hacia la salud mental es esta caminata de acompañamiento. Gracias, Daniela. Eh, Thank you, Daniela. Valerie, do you have anything to add, Rafael, Margarita? Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to hear what Daniela said because I, it, it all was muted. Um, but to answer your question, um, uh, what is it when, when you're when I meet with clients, like what I've noticed over time, just because when I was starting this like eight years ago, it was a lot of like, um, just confusion with the population at the time. I remember they were mandated. So it was just difficulty of like, why was I referred here? What am I supposed to do here? And then just um, dealing with different people with those uh, questions and having to, to figure out, it's like, oh, okay, where could I meet with them? And I think that's where it got cut off with Daniela. It's like when you're Um, in therapy, it's like you're you're walking side by side with your clients and then just trying to figure out, so like, okay, what are these things that are coming up for you? And then with how you see things, view things, understand things, and just kind of indicating like, what are things that we could do differently to address these issues? And then finding the tools, appropriate tools to move forward, and then you are able to cope with whatever circumstance it is at hand. But in the process, you're just learning um, what are the effects of my surroundings, the people around me, my environment, how am I responding to that? So I know with working with my community, with, with, with Latino X, like it's just kind of being aware of like all these nuances that are present and then how am I responding to it and then the limitations of it. So what is it when in meeting with clients is like, that's what comes up a lot. Like, Um, recognizing those things and then how can you take care of yourself and be able to move forward because you can't control every aspect of it but what you could control is just how you react how you respond to things and how to for you to feel better and then along with us being like from different cultures like understanding all those differences and I know that maybe that as a therapist is a little bit different I feel like when you're from a different culture it's like kind of having that alliance and self-disclosing properly so you could have that um just rapport with your client and they're like oh this is normal i'm not the only one going through this or i'm not alone in having these thoughts or challenges along the way and that's when it's key to be very culturally aware of what's going on so you could better support your clients in the long run thank you uh, rafael did you want to add anything about it Yeah, uh, there is definitely one of those, um, this is one of those situations where we have to, uh, you know, again, go beyond. And uh, it is not the job of our clients, of our community members to teach us about their culture. It is our responsibility to go out there and learn. This is why with Humanidad, we do special trainings with all of our associates and therapists to be able to teach them how the Latinx community, and this is, I'm speaking globally, of course, but how the Latinx community copes when surviving in the United States. Most of us are not immigrants and we have mistakenly been taught um, to, um, again, understand, or, or we have been taught to uh, speak Uh, in a way that we are immigrants when in fact um, we are not immigrants, we are refugees. And I apologize, I'm getting distracted by all the messages that are popping up. But we are uh, refugees. We are either re economic refugees or uh, we are um, 
refugees because of violence that happened in our communities. And so we need to move away from calling ourselves immigrants because it's interesting with therapists and social workers and community health workers, once you hear the word immigrant, you assume that somebody decided to migrate on their own to this country. But when you say this person is a refugee or mentality changes completely and we say, oh, we need to go above and beyond and support this individual because these individuals didn't choose to come to this country on their own. And so I actually do a lecture call from, uh, it's, you know, and I use it in quotes, uh, from illegals to refugees, because it's about how people mistreat us, right? And makes assumptions about us. But the reality again is that, and so when people are in therapy, again, it's about if you understand the circumstances of your clients, right, their unique circumstances, then you're going to go above and beyond. You're going to learn about their cultural values, beliefs, and norms. But the other piece that it is uh, essential here is that we understand that we cannot control what is happening outside of uh, our offices or our centers but that we can create healthy and welcoming spaces for these individuals. And that has, uh, you know, um, a lot of the times we don't keep that in consideration. And so I, I think it's important for all of us to do that. Now, language, uh, very quickly, language is important, but a lot of the time when you do therapy or you provide therapeutic services, um, the issue here is being able to read people's body language because it is just as important, right? So I will bore you quickly with a story from Dr. Maria Hess or one of our original founders of Humanidad Therapy. And she learned Spanish when she was little because she, was, she lived in this neighborhood in LA where she was the only white person. And so as a child, she would go hang out with the kids in the neighborhood and she had to learn Spanish because everybody spoke Spanish. And she remembers that this woman came into therapy one time and she was crying and she could barely put two words together um, and she couldn't speak English very well. And she was trying, but when you try to explain something in a language that is not yours, you're not gonna be able to do a good job class. Your, your emotions don't come out correctly. And so I, she says that at one moment, she stopped the woman. She says, just tell me in Spanish what you have going on. And she says, I could feel all the emotion she was going through. And when she was able to voice all of that in Spanish, and Dr. Hess couldn't remember enough Spanish to have a conversation at that moment. But she says, when the person finished, right, she felt heard. And then she took a second, allowed her to breathe and says, okay, now we are gonna go over some of this a little bit slower, right? And then we're gonna process together. And so being able to read people's body language is as big of a language, again, as the spoken one. And being able to show compassion and empathy for people is the number one job of community health workers, therapists, doctors, teachers, even police officers, right? And the more we understand this, right, for posture and so on and so forth, determines what the interaction with that client is going to be like. And that's why it's important. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Rafael. Um, so with that, to, to kind of develop this interesting topic. What I've heard is that to build an open and safe environment where people can be sincere enough to discuss intimate topics such as depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, and in general, their worries in order to empower them to live a healthier life. My next question is like, can you share, and I would like to start this one with Margarita. Can you share with us what kind of words or vocabulary your family, friends, yourself, in the case of the, the therapists and facilitators and who work with clients, your clients use around mental health 
well, you know, addressing these kind of emotions. Margarita, estoy preguntando. No escuché bien, me gustaría que me repitieran la pregunta. I didn't hear Margarita, well. Can you repeat the question, please? Que, que hablando del, del tema de la salud mental, necesitamos. Margarita, I am asking regarding una, mental health. Un vocabulario. We need to develop a vocabulary. Para hablar de las emociones, de la ansiedad, about de anxiety, los pensamientos suicidas. Suicidal thoughts. Quisiera que nos contara qué clase de lenguaje. And I'd like you to tell us what kind of language you use. Cuando estás creciendo en tu familia, en tu comunidad, when you were growing para hablar in, in your de la salud mental. To talk about mental health. Eh, una de las cosas que, que hemos utilizado con nuestra familia. One of the familia, things that we've used indígena o campesina in our indigenous community más, with which we work with es tratar de is to try to escuchar y hablar menos es una de las to listen more and speak less that's one of the strategies eh, no es fácil uh, que nuestras comunidades se expresen de una manera It's not easy for our communities directa. to speak directly. Hay muchas veces que tenemos que entender There que are many times where we have to understand se comunican a través de de diferente that this is communicated through different manera de sus emociones different ways these emotions Tal vez en vez, en vez de venir a decir estoy deprimida, vienen y Maybe nos... instead of saying I am depressed. Estoy sufriendo, estoy llorando. They say, me duele I, el I'm alma, me duele el corazón. I'm crying. My soul hurts, my heart hurts. Una mujer que ha sido tal vez golpeada por su esposo no va a venir. A woman y... that has been abused by her husband. Estoy sufriendo violencia doméstica. Is not going to come and say there's a case of domestic violence in my home. La, la mayoría de, de, de las personas con las que hemos trabajado vienen y Most nos... Most that we've worked with... Mi cuerpo está lastimado por parte de la My, I heard uh, this or I heard that. O personas que han pasado por oh, abuso. O people that have sexual. gone through sexual abuse. No, no van a venir y decirlo como el lenguaje que nosotros o que yo me estoy expresando en estos momentos, sino ellos vienen it's, it's y me dicen. It's not the language I am expressing myself uh, at this time. Estoy pasando por cosas que no deseo. Como I'm going through estoy. things that I don't want to go through as a woman. Entonces es muy bonito a veces entender. And so it's very beautiful sometimes to understand what the art of language is. No nada más. Tal vez nuestro idioma. It's como not just our language. Indígena. Tal vez una manera de. de, de maybe it's just a way of. Sentimiento. Of, of how to reflect the feelings. And how they're explained. Y como dijo Rafael Vázquez. And as Rafael Vázquez said. Nosotros, how the body speaks for us. Como indígena. Nuestros ojos. As an indigenous person. Our eyes. Refleja quienes somos. Y lo que estamos. Reflect who we are. And what we're going through. Nosotros somos más de las we personas are more of the people observamos that observe la energía, the energy, la luz de los ojos de los demás, the light in the eyes of others, el entusiasmo de vivir, and the enthusiasm of living life. Gracias. Thank you. Any of you want to share when you were growing up? Perhaps that's why. The reason you became therapist is because you don't talk. I'm Colombiana and we don't talk about women. So we don't talk about mental health. Well, Ana Maria, I just want to take the time to thank Margarita for sharing that. I got, I got very emotional at the moment. I, I felt it. But, um, but exactly what she said, I think in our community, there's a lot of times that we express things like through just like physical symptoms and, and it's kind of similar to like in her sharing that it seems to kind of like with little kids it's like my tummy hurts or there's little things that are coming up and then mm -hmm. that's when kind of like going back to what Rafael says like having that context of kind of like in certain situations if we are coming with that framework of 
it's a little kid so we're gonna approach it that way it's like there's something more behind it and then us as a therapist with a provider able to assess what can I do to kind of dig a little bit deeper and get clarification on that so that I can support them but and he me hearing Margarita's perspective it's like right now I just had a revelation it's like sometimes we need to attend to that inner child of, of ours and be like okay what's going on right there that there's something else that's being lost in translation right like what what is being hinted at I think sometimes when um there's some clients of mine that come to me and they're like oh tengo nervios so me duele esto lo otro like when there's things that are they're reporting it's like I I have to take it upon myself it's like is it because they're really nervous or they're having like issues like that or is it like something else that is more pertaining to depression or anxiety or whatever the situation at hand so for me right now Mark really just gave me another reminder of like yes like we need to think outside of the box and then check ourselves to see like what we're coming into the room it's kind of like it's a little reminder that I need to kind of recalibrate myself as a provider as a helper and like approach things differently on the other end, like I know for me personally, like um, like I'm very open about it, but I had um, like a family who just, when crisis situations would arise, like had very difficult time processing it. A little bit of what Margarita shared, it's like there was silence, but sometimes that silence was so prolonged that it's like, when is this gonna be addressed directly? So I had a, um, what is it? I still do not have, but I have a sister who's bipolar. And at the time, like it would just present itself. It's like, oh, tiene range. It's like she's going through a tantrum. Mm -hmm. Just let her be. And there was a side of me of like, well, like I get that. Like I'm giving her space, but these things keep coming up. And not until she was a lot older did, did I realize, like, wait a minute, there's something else going on here. Like, and then that's what motivated me to address these things in my own way, and especially with just suicidal attempts and anything that would come up on her behalf. I was like, this doesn't sit well with me, but I know my parents in their best to their ability. It's like, oh, like, we're just going to try to console her. It's probably just her thinking that way, approaching things that way. But it's like, for me, it's kind of like, there's a little bit more going on. And how are we enabling or how are we not like empowering her to figure things out and not like um, quieting that voice of her. And so I know like in me seeing her struggle with that like kind of forced me to be like okay what can i do differently to support her but also like what also and i think this is something that now i've seen more with my clients i don't know it's because i work with humanidad but it's like they feel like okay i know my loved one is going through that but what can i do to better support them and understand them and that's where the educational component is very helpful because they're not trying to quiet the person they're not trying to just isolate them it's like oh it is what it is that's how they are that's how she is like no it's like let's do something differently to change that dynamic to not look the other way to feel more connected to feel more empowered it's like what can we do so they are feeling better because you indirectly as a family member are also um, going through trauma too because your experience of family is completely different in the long run so I think that's what I've learned in my experience with that but also connecting with other individuals of like we all have different experiences and we all have like ways to approach it. And sometimes when we are in that trauma state, it's like, well, what can we do to snap out of those situations and retrain ourselves? So we could feel more empowered. We feel like able to regulate ourselves or whatever the case may be, but to be able to, to actually support and help each other out. And, and I think that's been the, the key thing, like education has been helpful in order for people to have a perspective and understand it's not that they're having a tantrum. It's not that they're trying to get attention. It's like, there's other things at play that there's no control of, and they need to figure out what it is that exactly. And then for you as a supporter, just being able to address that the best way possible. And then everybody addressing, how is it that you communicate this? How you're getting your needs met? How is this gonna impact you in, in different areas of your life? You're gonna be closed off or open. What if I don't want to be closed up? What if I want to change that? So just overall, like um, that for me changed a lot. And I know a lot of people like when they come to therapy, they say that, which is unfortunate, but it's like, oh, you know, I was just told what to do. And I just took it as it is. Or my family's re really not like that. And in the process of them disclosing their family upbringing or how they address certain things, 
then they're able to acknowledge, oh, wait, now me as a parent either. And I tell this to a lot of parents, it's like, when you become a parent, and also like when I meet with teenagers because they reveal things in dynamics with their family, they're like, oh, I saw that growing up and, and then I do this, or I saw that growing up, but I did the opposite. So I tell people, it's like 50% of the chance you're gonna do what you saw growing up because it's normal and you're gonna take it face value because like, that's what I saw. So I guess it's normal, I'm gonna do it again. But then there's other people, it's like, that didn't sit well with me. And that's where you're motivated to change. But sometimes because you're in the process of figuring things out doesn't mean that it's actually gonna work out. And that's where we you know, go across these like barriers or challenges of like, I'm trying something different, but I'm not getting different results. And that's where we have to kind of like, as providers, like kind of, I, I always feel like the client is an expert on their situation, but just to kind of highlight those things and reflect that to them. So they're able to understand it's like, you know, what's going on, but you're getting closer to you coming to that revelation understanding. And then you processing that, what could we do now to change it? And I think that's a, a lot of the case, like with people who, like, I, at least I identify myself, like, i um, first generation, it's like, addressing all that generational trauma what am I going to do to to start that process and it's going to be a lot of healing for me and a lot of just like how am I going to model that now for my family and move forward how am I going to do that and model that for my community for for my peers and and change just that that view of things Thank you, Valerie, Daniela, and Rafael. You want to wrap it around? We're going to be a little running a little late to the resource first, but I think it's worth it. Thank you for your patience, everybody. I really want to take space and advantage of this beautiful uh, gathering here and conclusion and dialogue. And let's keep going. Thank you. Perfect. I was thinking about language and the connection of language with mental health. And one of the things that I realized growing up is that when my family was going through tough times, I would immediately put air into my football or basketball and I was feeling better. I have the opportunity today to work with many young kids and if I told them you know what in order to feel better why don't you come to my therapy room to talk about it for an hour they might not do it but if I say you know what let's talk let's paint let's do crafts or with some ladies that I work with why don't we knit why don't we sew that's where the connection the conversation starts that companionship process so Language doesn't only have to be verbal. Therapy has been influenced by culture, by a Eurocentric English-speaking culture. And if we focus on the language of happiness, marching, using your voice, dancing, that immediately helps our mental health. So it's not just about thinking about the therapeutic stuff as verbal in terms of words, but it can be a little bit more holistic. Thank you, Daniela. And then uh, anybody else, Rafael, Margarita, you wanna add anything?
Margarita, Valerie. Thank you to all of you Por último, me gustaría agregar algo. Eh, I would like to add something. Eh, como comunidad indígena, los, as indigenous community, creo que algo que hemos aprendido de una manera tan hermosa es I la think that something la tierra. we have learned in a beautiful way is the connection to the earth. Entonces nosotros nos sanamos a través de ella. ¿Por qué a través we, de ellas? We walk through it because it is through it. A través de sus medicinas que nos da. Through the medicine that she gives us. De, podemos salir al campo, caminar, convivir, estar en familia. That we can go out to the fields, walk, live, coexist, be together as family. Encontrar a nosotros mismos. To find cómo, ourselves. Who we are. Cuando entendemos la necesidad y el sufrimiento de los demás. También When we understand the needs and somos. suffering of others, we also understand who we are. La manera tan más hermosa que nosotros nos sanábamos cuando éramos niños. The most beautiful ways in which we healed ourselves when we were children. Es cuando mi mamá ponía un, una fogata en el centro. It's when my mom would make a fire in the center. Y todos estábamos en círculo y todos comíamos, hablábamos de nuestros sentimientos, pensamientos y sacábamos lo que queríamos ahí. We would all be together, gather around it talk, eat together, talk about our feelings, and got everything out. Y en la actualidad, de tantas, de estar en un lugar multicultural, se fue perdiendo poco a poco. And uh, in current times, from being in such a multicultural place, that has been lost y para as poder, time went by. Para poder entender a la comunidad y a nosotros mismos, tenemos and que in order, a nosotros mismos. In order to understand the community and in order to understand ourselves, we need to go back to what we were. Y cuando entiendamos quiénes somos, la vida sería mucho más fácil. And when we understand who we really are, life would be so much easier. Thank you, Margarita, for all your teaching. And you also have my gratitude. We again give this platform to talk one with the other. And that was an exercise. It was an exercise that we all have to go through. And into a little taste of what we all have to go through. And so I thank you. I thank you for this space. Wow. Muchas gracias. Thank you, everybody. I want to finish our panel with open heart and Part of that make us also human beings is things that we, we take for granted. I want everybody, I want to invite everybody in order to have a good kind of transition to take it for deep breath and acknowledge your body, your mind, your emotions and, and take, breathe it in, you know, breathe it in. Hopefully that can imprint that memory, that remembering and bringing your, all your parts together so we can keep walking with health, help and happiness, with dignity and respect. I appreciate, I am very moved for your collaboration and I hope this can carry on 